at ZestFest, and we are all lucky to have her here in Columbus. She has a new book, Recipe for Joy. Yes. Not just a cookbook, but a cookbook, right. as well as a memoir of your travels throughout the culinary world throughout the United States. Right. Can't wait to read it. Can't wait to taste this dish. Would you please give a ZestFest welcome to Robin Davis. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thanks so much for coming out today. It is a beautiful Saturday here in Columbus, and I think this is a great event to come to. Um, I think we're very lucky to have Zest Fest here, and I hope you're all having a great time. Now, what I'm going to do today is a little bit different. If you watched uh, Ed Kowalski, you know he was making pig wings, right? So we've had a lot of meat up here. I'm still going to do something zesty, but I'm going to introduce a crazy thing called vegetables. Vegetables. We're going to have some vegetables. We are going to do a buffalo style chicken salad. So I'm going to make the, wing, uh, the chicken and make it taste like chicken wings, but we're going to have the base be a salad. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to get started with the chicken itself. I am going to try to turn this up just a little bit. We are using um, boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Nothing very difficult in this at all. I cut them into cubes. Now, I cut a lot of cubes up uh, yesterday to make sure that I had enough samples for you all. Um, and um, so the, the, they should be about an one inch, but you'll notice that the, the pieces got bigger and bigger as the night went on. That seems to be uh, what I do. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of salt, not too much, because what we're going to do, let's see. Oh, there we go. Um, we're going to have a few other things on here, and so I don't want to make it too salty. We are going to add a, um, a ch I'm sorry, a wing sauce, and then we're going to have a few other things that are really salty, blue cheese in our salad. So I want to make sure uh, that it's not overly salted but still well seasoned. That's one of the, the keys to cooking. All right, a little bit of flour, because I'm not going to fry these either. Oh, my gosh, we're not frying and we're not eating massive quantities of meat and it'll still be delicious. All right. Oh, you're all laughing. It's true, though. It's true. All right. Da, da, da. I'm figuring this, uh, this skillet out. I want to make sure it's nice and hot. We're going to put a little bit of vegetable oil in here, just a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and toss this all together. Now, this week in the Columbus Dispatch food section, I had a recipe that was uh, buffalo spiced grilled salmon, and that was really delicious, too. Uh, and I thought about making that, but then I thought I'd do a little bit of a variation on it. Uh, what was great about it is it had the glaze, it had all the flavor of uh, buffalo-style chicken wings, which I know we love, uh, but it had it on the fish, so it was nice and light. And then I did a little bit of a blue cheese cream uh, dressing right on top. All right, I think this is hot enough. We'll hear when it sizzles, when it hits the pan. Eh, it's not sizzling. It'll be fine, though. It'll be fine. I like, the, um, I like using a nonstick skillet in this particular case because um, I really want it not to stick. I'm not a huge fan of nonstick all the time, but I don't need this to stick and give me a nice brown crust. All I need to happen is for the chicken to get nice and brown as it cooks. I like nonstick for eggs. It's awesome for eggs. But if I'm doing something like a steak or something that I want to make a pan sauce, I for sure want that uh, stainless steel skillet where things actually look like they stick a little bit and you get those nice browned bits. Because those are your flavor friends. And so when you add a liquid, you've got kind of an instant sauce and you dissolve that all up. All right, we are going to let this cook. Of course, we want our chicken to be cooked all the way through. And I'll tell you um, what else we're going to do. Once the chicken is almost all the way cooked, we are going to add a little bit of wing sauce. Now, I am using, <laughs> she has to say, it's like, this is a new stove to me, a new, a new stove. Am I doing all right? Okay, good. I, I kept turning it up, so I think, I think we're good. So we're going to use the um, red hot sauce, and, and this one is pretty spicy. I will tell you the truth, my family is not into spice, not even black pepper. I put black pepper on things, and they're like, ooh, too spicy. So we don't always agree. This is pretty spicy. They loved the, um, the fragrance of it when I was cooking it last night, but uh, it was a little bit too hot for them. We'll let you guys decide. You can use any hot sauce that you want. You could use straight Tabasco, st uh, straight Frank's hot sauce. You could use any of the sauces that you'll find here today. They would be terrific. And I haven't had a chance to go around and sample them yet, but I'm sure there are some great ones that would work just fine. 
So we're going to hit this with a little bit of the hot sauce and a little bit of vinegar. I know that might sound a little funny, but that's going to be what our sauce is on the chicken. It's all going to turn this beautiful, bright orange color. Now, I'm cooking the chicken first uh, because I want the chicken to be warm without being really hot. Um, you could serve it hot if you wanted. We're going to use a romaine lettuce, so that'll, that'll be fine. It'll certainly stand up to everything that we're doing. But I don't want it to be so hot that it wilts the, the lettuce really quickly. So we're going to cook it. We're going to set it aside, let it uh, be warm, but not, not too hot. Chef, that yesterday we had a, mm -hmm. a cooking demonstration from Mike Eisenberg from Wicked Cactus, and he indicated, and I thought it was a good point, that the difference in what we cook at home and what we get in the restaurant sometime is just the acid, that we get worried about the sweet versus savory and everything like that, but just that acid, the, the, the vinegar, right. the lime juice, the lemon juice, mm -hmm. and that's interesting that you're going to put vinegar in this. I Absolutely, never of and it's very true. You'll, you'll notice a brightness to flavors of food in... Um, restaurants and it is it's vinegar it's lemon juice it's that last little hit the other thing that it is is kind of seasoning as you go i put a little bit of salt on this even though i know that the salt uh there's going to be plenty of salt in our sauce because it's kind of building those flavors layering those flavors and you will notice too that once i hit this with uh the the hot sauce and the vinegar i'm going to use this vinegar again in the dressing so you're going to get that same flavor in the dressing and here and so you kind of get the layers of flavor, the complementing of the flavors. Um, it, it's just, it's about building flavors. Really good chefs know that, um, and, and that's terrific. That's a very interesting point, though. A have you ever noticed uh, home cooking isn't always the same? It doesn't taste quite the same as what we get in restaurants. Uh, for better or worse, there are some things I think restaurants don't do especially well, and some things that home cooks do um, that, that could it be improved. And a lot of that just has to do with volume. Um, it also has to do with people in restaurants have somebody else who does all the chopping for them. Um, I don't have that at my house. Though I have three kids, so I'm trying to teach them. Wouldn't that be great if I could have three little sous chefs? I do, however, have a, um, an awesome dishwasher. His name is Ken. He's my husband. He is a great dishwasher, and he does uh, end up being my, um, my dishwasher. Uh, for all, all my meals, big and small. He cleaned up all my pans last night. All right. Is he here, Chef? I he mean, is not. I so think that was fairly sadly, obviously. I know, that would be great. He <laughs> is often with me um, at most things that I go to. Not today, unfortunately. He had a previous commitment. What was that all about? He's probably in therapy from <laughs> washing all the dishes. <laughs> He's probably uh, getting a paraffin wax on his hands so they're not all dry. Uh, all right, our chicken is looking good. We want to make sure that it's cooked all the way through. And you guys all know about, about food safety with this, right? So I cut all this up. I cut it up on a board like this, and then I was really careful to make sure that the board and the knife were sanitized. Um, you want to make sure that once you have cooked or cut up raw chicken, you don't use this again um, with your raw vegetables. I did not cut anything on this, this board. This one's fine. But when I did this at home, that was something that's really, really important. Um, I don't like to be a germaphobe, but that's just one thing you really need to keep in mind. You know, I did a story not too long ago also about produce. And uh, sometimes we get stuff home and we think, oh, it's fresh from the farm, doesn't need washed. FYI, yes, it does. Um, because even if it's organic dirt that it was grown in, it was still grown in dirt. And I'm, I don't want to eat it. So just give it a good rinse. And then if there is um, anything that, that might be clinging to it, that will help to get rid of it. So just something to keep in mind. With most produce, you don't need to wash it off until you're ready to eat it. Um, certainly true of our nice um, berries that we get in season right now. You don't want to wash those and stick them in the refrigerator because that promotes uh, mold. Um, it'll make them spoil more quickly. Chef, as we get to the, to the early days of summer, what's in season now? Oh, what, what's, it, what's in season? Right now, what's in season? Our strawberries have just moved out. Raspberries are in season. I went to um, Mitchell's Farm Market or Mitchell's Berries out in Plain City and picked red raspberries and black raspberries right now. They won't tell you, but they have black raspberries. So um, you can get those. Blackberries are just coming into season. And then I hear from my farmer sources that we are actually going to have an awesome peach season. Um, so this year is going to be a great peach season, and that's going to be at the end 
of um, the, uh, at the end of July. Uh, after that, we'll start to get tomatoes coming in August and sweet corn. You might find sweet corn a few places, but I would question if it's Ohio sweet corn, just saying. Because I drive around a lot and I haven't really seen any uh, uh, corn stalks that are large enough to be producing corn, sweet corn. So, so Chef, the, the wing sauce and the vinegar. Yes, it is just the wing sauce, which I added a lot of. And boy, it's clearing my sinuses. Um, yeah, the wing sauce and then a little bit of vinegar. And all I'm doing, I know you can see this, is we're cooking it until it gets nice and glazed, which is what I want. So this is a beautiful, a beautiful just the way it is. And so we're going to turn this off. And if you're going to make this at home, as Chef Davy said earlier, any of these wonderful wing sauces from our vendors, go pick up four, five, six, seven. Make this at home. Experiment exactly. with different wing sauces. Yeah, for sure. Because um, they're, all, they're all terrific. And you can tailor it then to your heat level, your family's heat level, whatever it is you all like. All right, so we have that. That's going to cool a little bit. We are going to make our dressing. Now, if this is a, um, a wing, a chicken wing salad, what kind of dressing am I going to have? Blue cheese. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Um, because you have to have blue cheese when you're doing this. Um, so I am using some blue cheese crumbles. And they it comes already crumbled, but you can also do your own if you like. We're going to do that. We're going to do buttermilk. I like buttermilk in this dressing instead of mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is a fabulous thing. I'm a huge fan of mayonnaise. But buttermilk is going to make this nice and creamy and delicious, and it's going to be a little bit better for us. I am not trying to make a healthy dish here. It just happens to be something that, um, that's going to work out a little bit that way. It's, it's a smart way to use it. All right, about six tablespoons, thereabout. And then we're going to, again, reach for our red wine vinegar. And we're going to do a couple teaspoons here. We have the nice, creamy uh, buttermilk. We have the nice, creamy blue cheese. I need something to add a little bit of flavor interest, and that's going to be this. So we've brightened up our flavors there. All right, I'm going to mix this together. It's not a thick dressing, like maybe a ranch dressing. And I'm going to go ahead and mash up as much as possible the blue cheese. Some chunks are fine, but we're going to use the rest of this as a garnish. Now, you can make this dressing ahead of time. This is a terrific dressing just any time you want to make a salad. It's great. It'll keep in your refrigerator three to five days. It's great on fresh tomatoes right out of your garden when those are ready. Really, really nice. OK. This is good. We're going to let this set aside. Just let those flavors develop. Our chicken's still cooling. And now we have to do our vegetables. I told you we were going to use some romaine lettuce. Um, because I think it's a nice sturdy lettuce. I'm a big fan of lots of different lettuces, but this is not a salad that you want your dainty little spring greens. It's big, big flavors, and uh, it's, it's got some serious bite to it. So we want to make sure we have something that stands up to that. I you, you run the mm -hmm. risk also that if you put the chicken on hot out of the skillet, that it could wilt, wilt yeah. those It greens. would, absolutely, absolutely. So that's why we want that to just uh, cool down a little bit. Now, I'm going to cut this up. The other thing I love about romaine, it's a lettuce you can cut. It's one that absolutely stands up to that. Um, you know, some lettuces, you cut them, and they just bruise. They don't even really cut. They just they look offended that you've taken a knife to them. So we're going to take uh, our knife here and go ahead and chop this up. Just bite-sized pieces. Everything is in bite-sized pieces because this is, after all, a salad. Um, I'm not a fan when somebody gives you a salad, and then you have to sit there and cut up. Uh, the greens. That just tends to not work for me very much. All right. We can do as many as you want. I think um, for a main course salad, you want about three cups of greens per person. More or less, whatever you like to do. Okay. Now all I'm doing is cutting down through them, cutting them into halves, and then cutting them again into quarters. I, of course, removed the core. Remove any spots that don't look good to you. These were, of course, all cleaned. I cleaned everything at home before I got here. Um, and with uh, salad, the other thing you want to do, you want to rinse things off, and then you want to dry them. You dry your greens really, really well. And the reason behind that is because if you don't, your dressing's going to slide right off. So you're going to have 
wet, soggy greens and dressing in the bottom of your bowl. And that's not a delicious salad. When I was in cooking school, and I went to cooking school in uh, San Francisco, uh, we used to, I don't know if they still do this in restaurants, we would take towels, nice clean towels like this, and we would put all our greens in them, we would roll it up, and we, two of us would stand there, and we would go outside, and we would spin them, and that was our, our big way to dry them. Um, we only did it once in the kitchen, and the kitchen got all wet, and the chef wasn't happy, so we only did it once there. Um, but it's a great way to do it. If you have a salad spinner, that's terrific too. Um, I did a big hotel pan of greens, and what I did is I put paper towels on the bottom, put paper towels on the top, put it in the refrigerator overnight. In the morning, they were nice and crisp, really beautiful, um, and not wet. So that was important. All good. Okay, we are almost ready. I have one more of these to go. All right. That looks pretty full. We may just stop there. And then because you don't have to do this part, but I like it, I think you need to have celery in your, um, your salad as well if you're going to call it a, a chicken wing salad. And uh, the reason for all of this, we've got a lot of different flavors, a lot of different textures. The celery and the lettuce are also going to help cool us off. There's definitely a balance of flavors we want here. Um, my favorite hot and spicy dishes are ones that then have a cooling element somewhere. Um, they have either a yogurt sauce or a blue cheese sauce, um, a little bit of rice, something like that that gives your palate a break. Because then what you do is you keep going back for that hot sauce. You want that hot sauce. You're not overwhelmed. So I think that that's really important when you're thinking about a dish to go ahead and give it a little bit of balance. So I try to do that, even with your food that's not spicy. Try not to make things that are one-dimensional. Um, you know, we put a little bit of salt in our chocolate chip cookies or any of our uh, desserts. And the reason is that, again, it intensifies the sweetness, gives your palate just a little bit of a break. All right. There we go with all of our celery. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to toss this with some of our dressing. Here's my, uh, here's my tip on dressing a salad. Use a little to begin with because you can always add more. You can never take more away. You can't take the dressing away. We could add more if we wanted to do that. Nobody wants an overdressed salad. So we'll add about half of it and we'll give it a nice toss. Tongs are the most wonderful thing in the whole wide world because they work as your hands. There was a time in my life when I would have just reached my hands in there. I didn't do it in public, though. I never let you see that. But your hands are great, great, great tools. Uh, don't be afraid to use your hands in your cooking, but make sure your hands are really, really clean. That's important. Always start, anytime I start cooking, I start by washing my hands really well. When I'm done here, the first thing I'll do is I'll wash my hands really well. I wash my hands a lot. All right, we're going to do just a little bit more because I like it to be a little bit better dressed. So there we go. Now, you'll see a lot in my recipes, a lot in all kinds of chef's recipes. They'll say, season it to taste with salt and pepper. The only way you know that is to taste it. And that needs a little salt and a little pepper. So there we go. A little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. My level of salt tolerance is different than yours, right? Um, you might like things really salty. You might like things just a little bit salty. You might be really sensitive to salt and think, I don't want any salt at all. And those tastes are all valid. So I do make things um, according to my taste because I'm the one cooking. But when you make this at home, you can for sure uh, make it how you like. So when someone says uh, season to taste, that's what they mean. Taste it, see how it tastes, and then go from there. All right, we have our chicken. It is not too hot. We're going to go ahead and add this in. This is one heavy skillet, let me tell you. All right. Spread it out a little bit, and don't be afraid to let some of that sauce get on here. That's just another great flavor. And then we're going to add a little more blue cheese. And that's as a garnish. I think it adds um, a nice flavor. We're going to get that nice pungent flavor on top of everything else. 
You can add as much or as little as you want. Other things you could consider adding, even though it would no longer be traditional or authentic, um, I think tomatoes would be really great in this. It would add a nice sweetness to it. It would add a little bit of color. Um, and I also think um, that you could add things like radishes and you can add herbs as well. So we do have samples for you because we would never make you come here, watch me cook, and then not be able to eat. So please feel free. I'm not sure how we how we do the samples. Are we bringing them? They'll be. They will magically appear. Come out here to our Children's Hunger Alliance table. Chef, if you could tell us a little bit about your book. Absolutely. My book is called Recipe for Joy, um, and it is a, a stepmother's guy, uh, a tale of um, food, faith, and family. Um, because m the way I got here was kind of interesting. I moved back to Columbus, or I moved to Columbus because my father was sick. Um, I decided I needed a break from my life in San Francisco, so I came here temporarily 11 years ago. And I ended up uh, marrying, marrying a widower with three young children. And um, I had no intention of ever becoming a mother. I was not particularly good at being a mother. But the one thing that I could do is I could cook. So what we did is we gathered together every night for family meals. And that's how we got to know each other. And that's how we got to be a family, was around the table and cooking. So that's what the, f the, the book is about. It's kind of my story on that. And um, it does have recipes at the end of every chapter. Not this one. This one's not in the book. Um, and it's a celebratory meal, because I really do believe that everything in life is a celebration, no matter what might have, have happened to get you there. Um, there's an awful lot to celebrate. So there you go. How can we, how can we find it? You can find it at, you can find it at uh, Barnes & Noble. You can find it at Amazon. You can also get it at LoyolaPress.com. Um, yeah, so you can get it there. Or you can go to my re website, RobinCDavis.com, um, and I'll be happy to uh, place an order for you there. And we can read her in the Columbus Dispatch, the food oh, editor. excellent. There is also, I'm sorry, there are, um, I did bring some bookmarks as well. So you can, uh, you can pick one of those up if you want to know more about it. And we'll have sampling from the Children's Hunger Alliance Sampling Station. One more time, how about a hand for Robin Davis? Thank you. Thanks, Robin. Sampling will be at the sampling station as soon as they get them ready backstage. When you see them come out, head on over. If you want to make a donation to the Children's Hunger Alliance, they certainly would appreciate it, and so would we. Wing eating contest coming up at 1 o'clock. 